Hello everyone, this is John from RPGs and More, and in today's episode, we're going to have a continuation of the, or a, a beginning, the first actual episode, I should say, of the Cypher System solo play session, where I will showcase how the Cypher System rules work based upon my knowledge and memory of the rules. Now, it's very possible that I may make rule mistakes as I go. Um, you're welcome to point those out in the comment section if you so desire. Uh, most of the time when I play games, I know that I'm not always doing everything correctly, but I try to do everything as correctly as I can and present something that's fun at the same time. Anyway, let's kind of jump in to what we're doing. So the last time we handled the Cypher system, we created several characters. Uh, we're going to take one of those characters, uh, the first one I created that actually there's not a video of at the moment, but um, uh, Gripthon. Gripthon, we're going to take this character on, a, on an adventure. Now, for those of you that don't remember Gripthon, let's do a quick recap. Gripthon is a strong warrior who masters the sword. So Gripthon is, I would describe him as a significantly strong looking, large of stature, kind of a, a Conan-esque figure, uh, except not quite his beefcake, uh, but just in the sense of he's, he's a large, well-muscled man who uh, happens to dress in very plain clothing and carries a large sword. Let's see. He, ca he carries a heavy sword, basically a great sword, and wears chainmail armor. All right. I think that's about as, uh, let, let's, give, what, what does he kind of look like? Well, let's give him long, dark hair, slightly curly, and he wears a green tunic and brown uh, trousers. Excuse me. His eyes are also brown with a slight hint of amber. To them and he generally goes clean shaven which is a interesting feat during this time this time so all right now the question is where is he where are we starting at well i've already decided that that's we're going to be starting in a place called the mage wastes and this is a location in a campaign setting of my own design and what it is is it is a a large, a kingdom-sized land that is completely blasted. It's a, it's a badlands of the worst kind that you can imagine. There's almost no vegetation anywhere. Living, there are living things, but almost all of them are sustained somehow by dark magic, or uh, fell sorceries, or they live off of each other. And the mage wastes has been this way ever since the ruination of the mage wars or the, the event that's called the mage wars over a thousand years ago where uh, groups of mages fought terrible battles against each other in this land and and uh, the mage wastes was once or the the dead wastes i should say the dead wastes of the mage wars they at one point, it was a breadbasket. It was a beautiful land uh, filled with only the, the finest of things. And it was fought over so much. And so many people tried to control it because it was the very best of lands that it was completely and utterly destroyed. And even now, dark purple clouds still royal over the mage wastes uh, and perpetually there's there's no clear sunny day in this land at least not from the observation of other people that live in lands uh, that neighbor it 
and occasionally purple lightning strikes down from those clouds at random points and, and uh, causes things to happen upon the surface. This lightning has strange effects. It's, uh, it can demolish something or it can change it. It's, um, it's a very dangerous, very hazardous environment, and no one really goes there willingly. Most people that go there are desperate or they're looking for something. And I think that's that might be why Gripthorn has taken a boat across the Lamia River and ventured into the border of the Mage Wastes on the other side of the Lamia River. But we're going to roll on a chart to see what his actual mission is. I'm kind of curious. I want to get some inspiration. I don't want to sit there and have predetermined everything. So what we're going to use for this is a lonely knave. And these are solo rules designed to work with the knave role-playing game. However, they are of a nature that you can really use them with any system that you want to have a, a kind of game master emulator uh, with that you don't want necessarily want to go full excuse me you don't necessarily want to use the full mythic game emulator but you want to have some options and some more complicated answers than you might get from say the OSR emulator that I've used in the past so I'm going to test drive this today with the cipher system we'll see how this goes this is going to be the first thing we're going to do so what we're going to do here is we're going to ask an open question. And this open question is, why is Gripthon in the Mage Wastes? All right, and now I'm going to roll a 20-sided die an eight-sided die, and a six-sided die, and I'm going to consult those answers. So, I've got... some dice set aside here. Uh, I have my large die for the 20-sided and the six-sided, but now I've got a regular size die for the eight-sided. Actually, let's bring the board up. What do we got? 19, 1, and 2. So 19, 1, and 2. That means that we got punish emotions badly. Punish emotions badly. Okay, so he so Gripthon is there because he felt something. He he oh hmm. He is punishing himself because he betrayed someone that cared about him deeply. Someone that someone that really had an emotional investment in Gripthon. And he he accidentally or on purpose kind of betrayed this person. Uh, was it an accident or was it on purpose? Now, that's going to be a d20 roll. I'm neutral. It's 50-50. That's a 1. On this chart, that means no and. So the question was, was it accidental? And the answer is no. In fact, he did it on purpose. Not only did he do it on purpose, but he's not really sorry. We're going to scratch the earlier idea. He's not really sorry. So what's the punishment? Um, so he punish. He was exiled. Well, not exiled. He, he was more or less kicked out by this person that cared about him. Punish emotions. They were so upset with him uh on purpose. All right. That he was basically put on the ferry. Not, it's not the ferry, I guess. He was put on a boat and thrown off of the boat onto the shore 
of the mage wastes and abandoned there. That's how badly that the, this person uh, was betrayed by him or felt betrayed by him. Because it, um, and so Gripthon knows that if he's ever going to going to get someone to want to come and pick him up on his side of the river, that he's going to have to show that he has something worth risking their life to come and pick him up for. So being the intrepid adventurer that he is, realizing that he, I don't have any money, I have my armor, and I have my sword, and I have my health. He's going to venture into the mage wastes in the hopes that he can find some treasure or some trophy, something that's going to get the interest of a, a fisherman who's in the river that might pass by later and get him passage to get home. That's his intention. That's why he's there. So trying to find a way home to find trophy or treasure. to buy passage home. All right. So, Gripthorn, his, uh, his hand uh, shading his eyes, his great sword on his back, uh, uh, begins trudging across this rocky landscape between two large boulders and begins to just make his way slowly up the bank and gets his first look across this uh, this shoreline at the mage wastes beyond. And what he sees is this these blasted badlands. There's scrub bushes here and there, but mostly it's just dark. Uh, and it's just dark rocks and tan rocks, some red rocks, a few purple rocks, and black rocks. There's all strange colors, uh, and you'd think that they would make a certain amount of geological sense, but they don't because it's like some young child was painting with a paintbrush and couldn't see what they were doing and didn't care. And it just, it goes on that way as far as he can see. There's hills here and, and bits there, and they're out on the distance. There's ruined structures, uh, ancient monoliths, and the idea... The, these hints of civilization that existed a thousand years ago but have now crumbled almost to dust and, and just bare uh, stone nubs worn thin by wind and time and the constant storm that is above his head. He looks up into the purple clouds and gazes up at them with this, this determination, uh, his furrowed brow and determined set in his jaw. He's not going to let the, this storm be the end of him. He thinks he can master the storm. But in that moment, the lightning's going to come down. Boom! Clash of thunder. And he watches as it strikes a bush. Not too far from where he's at. Let's say it's a bit of a long distance from where he's at. It strikes this bush. And the bush bursts into purple flame and burns. And something happens. Uh, that, that bush is actually going to begin to burn and then change and morph. And uh, Gripthorn is going to draw his sword as he realizes that the bush has transformed into a monster. Not just any monster, but this, this bush is transformed into almost a skeleton-like figure that begins <laughs> burning fire, purple flame all around it as this this bushy, thorny skeleton slowly just uncurls itself from where it was. It's impossible to tell if it was always a skeleton or if the lightning transformed it into one. But you know what? He's not going to worry about that too much because in the end, what he's worried about is the fact that this is a creature and this creature has now locked its purple burning eyes upon him and begins to advance. So we're going to start with this this image of this you know this this undead like creature coming towards him and we're going to roll initiative uh, but um so if memory serves initiative in cypher system is a little different so what we're going to do is we're going to roll a speed 
or no, or it's initiative is a separate role, but it's kind of like speed. Um, you can't actually add anything to it. You just kind of roll. Sometimes you get bonuses to initiative based upon character abilities, but Gripthorn doesn't have any of those. Uh, last I checked, and I'm not seeing no no bonus to initiative. So he's simply going to roll a d20, and he's going to try to roll higher than the uh, the difficulty class or the number of this monster. Now this is a this is a, I'm going to treat this like a standard skeleton. So in Cipher uh, Perloyance, this is a a third level or diff or difficulty three creature but it means that the number the target number is nine so i've got to roll a nine or higher on this uh this d20 die otherwise the creature goes first five okay this is not a grip thorns lucky day so Skeleton attack. Okay, so bush skeleton or burning burning skeleton. Attacks first, and so this burning skeleton comes walking up to him and just brings its hand up. And as it does so, the tendrils of this bush, the the branches, kind of morph and turn around within this purple fire to form this kind of weird haphazard club and it brings it up and just brings it down up, uh, towards Gripthorn trying to smash him with this club. Now Gripthorn, uh, he will get to defend and so in, in order to do that he's going to make a, <clears throat> excuse me, He's going to make a might defense roll to try to block or uh, or parry this attack. Because he had his sword out, his sword is ready, so he's going to try to do that. Now, he can choose to add effort to this roll, but at this point, he's, he's still gauging this foe. He's still trying to figure out what they are, so he's actually not going to add anything to this. Now, I have to roll, again, a 9 or higher or this creature hits him. So let's see what we get. That's a 17. So not only does he succeed in blocking the blow, so the, the club comes out, rawr, and he brings his great sword up, bang, and he blocks it, and the, the club slides down along the, the branch. Um, he actually gets, uh, he it, it's a full on block, he doesn't do any extra damage to the creature, which you would normally get a little bit extra with a 17, but um, it does get a slightly minor effect. Uh, I think I think he gets a minor effect for that, which means that uh, no, that that's a that's a, like a 19 and uh, 18, 19 and 20 that gets a minor effect. I apologize. So, uh, he, but he blocks it. Bang! Okay. Instantly, we're going to go to Gripthorn's turn. Gripthorn uh, doesn't like this at all. He he. He sees this this creature before him, and just and he just roars into his face, Arr! wordless shout of his personal rage and his anger, how badly he's been treated in his mind. And so he brings that sword. That sword was up. He brings it down in a downward slash. He's going to try to, to just cut this this creature down, but he is. Um, He's very confident in his ability to do so. so. But he is going to add a level effort. But he's not going to add the effort to the attack roll. He's going to add the effort to damage. Now, in this case, uh, he has an edge of 1 and a might of 20. So he's going to spend two of those might points. So he's going to spend two might points. to enhance his damage. All right, if this attack succeeds, he'll probably destroy this creature in one blow. So, let's see, will it succeed? He has to roll a nine or better, no adjustments. Um, well, actually, does he get a, an adjustment? He's uh,
Nope, he does not get any automatic adjustments to this. So it's a straight D20 roll. 14. Okay. So he just <laughs> brings that sword down in a mad swipe. And the sword smashes, crashes against this purple uh, burning and just slices through the, the, the wretched wood and bone of this, this kind of bush skeleton creature and just bisects it. <laughs> Slash! And it begins to crumble away and it starts claw, like even the upper torso as it falls down towards the ground, tries to claw at him. Um, but then it falls to the ground. And uh, it there's kind of more purple smoke and dust comes off of it. But then it, uh, it grows still once more. And so first creature defeated in his venture into the, the mage wastes. And Gripthorn kind of looks from his sword to the creature and back to his sword and lifts the blade up. Well, old friend, it would appear you and I still have work to do. Now, let's be about it. And he begins to walk further into the mage wastes. And let's see. Uh, so, what is what is he going to encounter next? I want to get an idea of what his next encounter is going to be. So we're going to ask that open-ended question. What does he encounter next? And that's going to be a d20, a d8, and a d6 over again. Eight, one, and six. Eight, one, and six gives us Bestow emotions selfishly. Okay, so as he ventures further in, he, he comes across a clearing in this area, this, this kind of strange clearing. There's um, this old jagged rocks all around but this one part of the clearing is very very smooth almost glass like smooth it, um, and in the middle of it there is a, a a fountain this big sparkling bright fountain and this fountain takes the form of a cup a cup and this cup is covered in kind of this gold filigree um this this, this kind of gold plated there's gems and jewels visible upon it. And uh, Griptorn can't believe his luck. There's that treasure. And he starts feeling good about himself. He's like, ah, the treasure I need, here it is. The treasure I need, here it is already. My quest is all but done. I shall be home before the day is out. Ha, 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 ha. Fools, who, th who could think they could stand against the might of Griptorn? Magic, you have no power over me! Ha <laughs> ha, mage wastes! Ha, <laughs> foolish baron! And he makes his way boom, boom, straight up uh, towards this thing. And he's he's selfish. He, he's very... He, this is a, a selfish moment for him because he sees exactly what he wants and he's not really thinking about anyone else or anything else or what else this could be. So he reaches out. And as he's reaching out, he hears a voice, no, don't. And he turns and he sees someone come around to different rocks from somewhere else. And he sees this, this tall person, this, um, uh, um, I'm introducing an NPC into this because I really want to emphasize the selfishness of this of uh, Gripthorn in this moment. And I this, this seems like a good time to introduce the other character that we created, uh, who was Tomilla, a appealing speaker who works miracles. So uh, Gripthorn turns and sees this this beautiful woman walking towards him from behind a rock. She says, no, stop, wait, hold, don't touch it. And 
his first reaction is just, oh, ow. You're trying to keep me from my treasure. You cannot do this. I shall have the treasure. It is not yours. I got here first. No, that it's not what it seems. Don't touch it, please. Ha! Weakly. And he's going to reach out and he's going to grab it. Now, in the moment that it took for him to hesitate, uh, Tomella is going to have actually stepped upon the glassy surface of where they are. And as she reaches out her hand for the final, no! Uh, Gripthorn grasps the this one of the gems on the side of this thing and grabs the gem and he starts trying to just yank it out. We'll see. Can he pull it out? That's going to be a might check. And at, it's we're going to put it at difficulty... I'm going to say this is going to be a difficulty. This is going to be level three, just like the monster was. Uh, not impossible. Certainly something that can be done. He's going to try to pull at it. Well, the nine, that's exactly what he needed. The exact number. So he just... just uh, uh, and he yanks this gem off and holds it in his hand with this look of triumph in his eyes. Like, ah! My ticket home is in my hair! As the gem, the gem starts to just dissolve in his hand. And it is going to, it begins to dissolve. And it dissolves into like these, the strange like critters or creatures that start to crawl down his arm. And then he looks and the entire crystal uh, the entire chalice, golden chalice, begins to morph and change into these thousands of tiny little creatures as they start to just kind of coalesce down towards the ground and begin to move out towards him. And he he turns to run, but it's too late as something else happens. And when, when the creatures make their way all the way off uh, the the central fountain, the source of the water that had been shooting up through this fountain is suddenly revealed as this crystal is exposed. And then this, as soon as the crystal is exposed, another bright shot of lightning comes out. Boom! And, uh, and Gripthorn and Tomilla both ah, put their hands above, above their eyes and they are blinded. And for a moment, it's as if the world itself turns off and then their eyes open and they blink several times, both of them trying to figure out what happened and where they are. And that will be what we discover at the next episode of Solo Cipher System. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you enjoyed this, please let me know. And uh, get, uh, leave a comment, maybe like and subscribe to the, uh, the channel. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Peace be with you. Bye-bye.